came for you from the Aeroflot Open uh, with a very beautiful finish. With the white pieces we have Andrei Asipenko, who uh, we started to notice at the World uh, Rapid and Blitz Championship, where he won a nice game, actually a really nice game against Sergei Karakin, which was featured on my channel. I will link to it in the card uh, accompanying this video. And with the black pieces we have Johan Salomon from Norway, also a grandmaster. But yeah, uh, Asipenko, he's still only 15 years old, so obviously uh, quite a big talent. And he opened with d4 in this game. We have knight f6 on black, e6. Of course, a flexible move. You can go for here the Queen's Indian and get rejected by alpha zero. You can go with a boko. Or you can go d5, which uh, Solomon did. You want d5. And after knight c3, again you have some choices. <clears throat> and Johan uh, went with bishop to b4, which is the Rakosin variation. Or the Rakosin defense. Here we have a slight sideline by Asipienko, goes queen b3. And actually, I didn't uh, have a chance to check the time the players used, but. They were following a game between Ratchipov and Leko for, for quite a while. So this is known theory, seemingly. We have c5, takes knight c6, bishop to d5. And as so often happens in the Ragozin, we have pressure here uh, with this pin. And of course, black wants to play knight e4. So this uh, means that white probably has to take here on f6, which he does. A certain suit by black taking on c4 and then he takes back on f6 so double pawns for black but black is still very solid we see rook c1 queen takes on c5 as Ypienko prefers to keep the queens on plays queen to h4 hitting this pawn and now king e7 and we're still following several games among them ratzipov against lego from 2013 g3 from white black takes the chance to take on c3 and white takes with a pawn if he takes with a rook then he has to spend some time worrying about his b pawn after queen b6 so as you go prefers to take with a pawn and then after b6 fianchetto and get castled so we see this and now h5 and only here after knight d4 and rook a to c8, we finally deviate from the Rajab of Leko game. So I'm sure that black was likely aware of this. And now we see knight b3 by uh, Azipenko. And I think the position should be around equal. I mean, the black king is in the center, that's true. A good observation, but it's also quite safe. There's no black squared bishop that can attack it. So you would need some uh, inventive maneuvers to attack it, and perhaps that's exactly what Ashipenko did. Queen e5, centralizing the queen. Queen over to a4. Here black played h4, but one might wonder what happens if he gobbles the pawn on e2. Well, that's very risky. Uh, white can play knight d4 here. And after we take, you can flick in this check and then take on b7 and this is going to be very dangerous for black for instance rook c7 take on d4 take on b7 and white can open things up with d5 and now the king is a problem because now white has managed to uh, activate his heavy pieces and the king is, is vulnerable here for instance takes rook e1 and problem here so johan salomon didn't fancy taking this pawn instead he played h4 so both opening the h file and at the same time getting rid of this isolated pawn which could have uh, become a weakness in the end game rook fd1 by azipenko going to the open file black gets rid of the h pawn opens up the h file and he plays rook c7 so up to this point the computers thought the position was about equal but i think i would prefer white here because after queen a3 all of a sudden there's a slight draft around the king he goes to e8 
and now rook d6. Here, black can probably still put up a good fight with knight to e7, aiming to, uh, well, perhaps kick this rook off uh, out of his enemy camp and also to establish something on d5 after white doubles. But instead he played queen h5, which looks tempting because, well, you're lining up your queen and your rook uh, on the h-file. However, you're not really threatening anything. You're only threatening a check here on h2, and the king always has this square. So a very important feature of a fianchetto position is that you're not so easily mated, especially if you have the bishop here. And it turns out that black is in some trouble now. Rook c to d1. Now the threat is bishop takes c6 and rook to d8 mate. So that explains why black played rook c8 to cover the back rank, the d8 square. Now rook d7, hitting the bishop on b7. So the bishop goes to the corner, bishop to a8. And now e4 by white. Probably there, there were better moves available. But having been under pressure for the last couple of moves, Black is tempted to try and relieve that pressure by playing rook d8, trying to exchange off some pieces. But this was his fatal mistake, and as we saw in the Karekin Azipanko game, he found a beautiful jackmate there, and he did just the same here. Can you find what Azipanko did? I want to tell you there's a tactical solution here. You shouldn't have much problems. And if you need to pause and come back, I will now give the solution. Ezipienko played the move that prompted Black to resign immediately. He played Queen E7 Jack. This undermines the knight's coverage of the rook. So after knight takes E7, rook takes D8 would have been checkmate. So another. Beautiful attack by Azipenko, the rising Russian star. So, before leaving you guys, I have a shout out to make. So, please have a look at this chess channel. It's Dance Chess Lounge. And, you know, if you're going to subscribe to one chess channel, subscribe to Dan. Don't subscribe to me, subscribe to Dan. And, you know, I just want to promote chess uh, when I see somebody with, like, great enthusiasm for chess. You know, it, it, it inspires me. And Dan is inspiring me. Have a look at this. First row. This is, these are five videos. So let's go. Two, three. You go down. Four, five, six, seven. Eight rows. Five times eight is forty. So that's one month ago. So that's okay. That's already forty videos in one month. What is that, guys? That's more than one video a day. So this guy is truly dedicated to his channel, to chess. And you know, if you look at his videos, I mean, he's really putting a lot of effort into, you know, the thumb thumbnails, into uh, editing the videos into selecting the themes i mean he already he, he he even got a vlog you know where he's showing us what he's eating you know going to the grocery store etc and you know i really want you guys to support dan um he's got some really nice videos on chess and game fundamentals like the lucena position uh opposition uh a lot of a lot of themes that are really important to a beginning players and he, he's got some themes like uh, the Greek gift he's got um, videos on on mating themes like Greco's made Damiano's made etc Morphe's made Anastasia made Likas trap Bolden's made already like I really want you guys to support Dan because we need channels like this where people have like super passion for chess and they just want to promote chess, spread the message and 
guys please please help Dan support to his channel and you know help enthusiastic content providers to grow on YouTube that's what we need you know stay together as a chess community and subscribe to Dan thank you guys bye bye